Hey everybody, guess what's happening? It's uh, it's me, it's Steve Simons, your old buddy, and we're doing another awesomers.com podcast episode. This one, episode number 203. So all you have to do, you go to awesomers.com slash 203, and you'll see, uh, well, you'll see if we're lazy or not. There could be some show notes, there might be some links, or uh, it might be a dead page. Uh, the <laughs> only way to find out is to go there now. Today, I have a special guest, Leron Hirschkorn. Say hello, Leron. Hello, everybody. There he is. Uh, and I, it, I've got my background of uh, Times Square today in honor of Leron, who's from the New York area. Yes, sir? Right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm about a uh, 30-minute drive into Manhattan. Well, there you is, go. Now a ghost town. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a sh historical shot for all of those. This will soon be in a museum where people yeah. used to walk the streets of uh, downtown right. Manhattan. Uh, or Manhattan and Uptown and Midtown and all those towns. Uh, so listen, Leron's agreed to join me. We're going to do a condensed podcast today on a simple topic. Well, I say it, I should say it differently. On a topic that's relatively simple to say but not easy to unwind, which is my product used to rank. Now it doesn't rank. I've lost my my mojo somehow. We're going to talk about why why that is, what we can do about it, if anything and get Leron's opinions. Uh, Leron, I'm gonna kick it right to you right off the bat. Let's suppose that somebody had a product, they launched that product, it was doing pretty well. In fact, it probably got going so well that they ran out of stock. Mm. And then what seems to be the case is now they've lost ranking, their pay-per-click is more expensive. Uh, first of all, have you seen this before? Do you, what are some of the other side effects, if any, that you've seen? Or yeah. maybe reaffirm these? Yeah. Yeah. So number one, um, it's, it's common, especially we launch a product, you have more sales than you expected, or you are, you think it's going to take you 30 days to get back in stock, but there's manufacturing issues or, or shipping issues or, or whatever. And it takes you 90 days and you, and you went out of stock. And so, yes, this is a very common thing that, that happens. And then when you get back into stock, you don't, uh, you, you're not showing up the same way you did before you went out of stock. Yeah, and so let's let's talk about one of the little tactical elements there. What should somebody do, if anything, when they go out of stock? When they listen, you know, the the world is full of uh, variables. As twenty twenty has taught us anything, has taught us that. What if they know they're going to run out of stock, or they have run out of stock? What should they do, if anything, to preserve their place in yeah. the in the world? So, so the first thing is, my feeling is that the better your sales are when you run out of stock. The better position you are in so some people will like to and again this is a philosophical or a business decision because some people when they know they're gonna run out of stock they say hey let me raise my prices let me pull back on my ads and let me be more profitable which I can see as a good business decision if you if you took ranking sort of outside of the equation that'd be the best thing to do raise your price because you're gonna go out of stock anyway why spend as much on ads you're gonna go out of stock anyway and make your business more profitable the the element that's that's added in when you sell on, on Amazon, which is like a, a you know algorithmic search engine really, is that this could affect your rankings when you come back into stock. The, the factors in play are how long are you gonna be out of stock for? If you're gonna be out of stock for two or three days, then okay, raise your price or, or, or whatever, and, and um, if it's for a very short period of time. But if you're gonna be out of stock for you know three weeks, a month, then, then slowing down your sales I think can hurt you. Um, and my goal would be to to go out of stock at a at the best BSR that I could because that's the last sort of thing signal that you're sending in the algorithm. The the reason why when you come back into stock you don't come back in at the same rate is, there's a number of reasons for this. But let's let's step back and think about sort of Amazon, right? And what Amazon wants. Does Amazon want you to go out of stock? No, Amazon wants product in stock. So essentially they're penalizing you within the algorithm to say, "Hey, if you if you go out of stock, we're not going to place your product as high because you might go out of stock again or whatever. And it's, it's not the best thing for, for the consumer. And two, the reason why this happens, I think is because built into the Amazon search algorithm are a few things, one of which is a time time factor. And so when you come back into stock, maybe Amazon, and again, I, I don't, uh, obviously, I haven't decoded exactly what the search algorithm is, but Amazon might look at things on a quarterly basis or on every three month basis. And they take a look now back and they take a look at the last three months. And the last three months has maybe two months of sales and one month of zero. And that averages in. When you come back, that average is factored into the, the algorithm, which is why you don't rank as well, because because there's a time factor that's kind of built in. Now, when you talk about ranking here, Liron, uh, are you talking about just the 
the kind of A9 organic ranking, uh, or does this apply to the pay-per-click ranking, the ability to get ads to show? Um, maybe they're mutually exclusive. I don't know. What's um, your yeah, I'm, I'm talking more about the about the the organic. I feel like it's you know easier if you're if you're relevant and you're bidding, you know that you can show up and you shouldn't. You know, it's much less common that I hear about you know sort of issues showing up from the ad side, um, but it's more in the organic. Uh, organic side where you sort of get penalized and in in certain instances and again it's not it isn't always an easy explanation certain instances people never recover from from being out of stock and sort of you know one of your sort of questions is how do you deal with it you know and what are some of the things you can do to deal with it yeah so before we before we jump to the solution let me just back up and say how do we prevent this uh i mean running out of stock we obviously don't run out of stock right that, that's a, a pretty binary choice but there's other things that could cause this uh maybe product suspensions or, or things along that line is are there any other preventative techniques or or things we should be aware of to avoid this problem to begin with um i mean if we're talking about sort of losing rank as a result of being out of stock, then the main thing is don't go out of stock. It's not always, it's not always possible or, or in your control. Um, but this is part of the risk and balance you need to do when you're bringing in a new product, right? Because, you know, you hear sometimes people saying, Hey, test a product, run a hundred units. And then if it does well, bring it back in. But you have to think about how are you going to, how are you going to do that? And if running out of stock, is going to be an issue. How is it going to affect your rankings? At the same time, if I brought 5,000 units and the product doesn't sell, I could leave myself with a bunch of inventory. So you need to find like sort of like what's a good balance and forecasting maybe better what I might sell and, um, you know, doing, trying to do a better job of, you know, what I might sell and how fast can I get inventory back in and managing the operational logistics of your business well so that you can minimize the, the potential effects of this. Yeah, it could be just an attention thing. Hey, you're trying to do three products or 10 products or 30 products at once. What if you just did 10 of them really well or one of them really well, whatever your ratio right. is. Um, what about the idea, I've heard this a lot and even uh, experimented myself with the idea of closing the listing during the time yep. you're out of stock. Is this something yeah. that is real or not real? What's your opinion? Uh, my opinion is that you should do it because I don't see the downside of doing it, right? So that if it's real, you don't have any downside. If it's not and being out of stock is the same as, as closing a listing, then you did it anyway. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that that helps. And I think also when you're going to, before you even launch a new product, there are certain things you can put into the listing. Like there's, there's things there like launch date and offer date and release date that you can put out into the future. And so it kind of tells Amazon, like, you know, because a lot of people will create their listing and um, a month before the product comes in, right? They're working on their copywriting on the images and they get everything going. They just leave it that way. But then into your listing, you can also put in certain things. This is a, a pre-launch, you know, sort of thing where you can put in a, a launch date, a release date, an offer date um, to um, sort of tell Amazon, yeah, this isn't live yet. Don't start the, the, the oh, we could talk about this too, right? The, this honeymoon period that you get when you, when you launch a new product. So there are some things you could do to make, set up your launch and your ranking for, better you know visibility starting out to, to begin with so you don't lose that time within within the algorithm yeah so we're going to come right back to that honeymoon period before we get into the solution uh, and and maybe even talk about why re-ranking and ranking are different things but one yeah. of the things that you brought up earlier and i just want to drive this point home you know basically amazon is that algorithmic machine it's a series of algorithms by the way there's not one there's yeah. hundreds if not thousands of these algorithms sometimes competing with each other um and so what what you find is it's it's just looking at data trends right what's your your one day sales uh, ratio what's your seven day sales ratio what's your 14 day 28 day 21 day you know all you know there's some series of these analysis that right. every part of it and by the way i believe it absolutely impacts ppc as well your ability to compete on the bids in ppc can be adversely affected by that sales trend. So the key thing that I think is relevant, and again, this is a, an opinion, Amazon doesn't endorse or uh, tell us anything about how this stuff works yeah. exactly. But by closing the listing, in my opinion, that stops the data collection, right? It pauses the machine. And then when you come back in stock in 30 days, 60 days, then it starts to read your prior history based on the days that the listing was open. This is why that is such a cre uh, critical technique 
yeah. I'm, again, my opinion. What do you? What's your thoughts? Am I uh, yeah. nuts? No, I mean, I I would say that to me that that makes sense. But like you said, it's like we don't know, right? But but there's no downside in you closing your listing. So that's why I do it. That's why I put these future dates and listings before launching them because I'm going to try to do everything I can to that if this stuff actually does work and actually does impact, then there's no reason not, not, not to do it. You know what? Uh, it's interesting what you say on the, on the PPC side. Um, it definitely could be that your cost per click, you know, is impacted and, and other elements are impacted that are harder for you to see because, you know, you're seeing, you're, you're seeing yourself show up. So you don't think anything is wrong, but you may not be realizing that your cost per click is actually higher during, during, uh, you know, during, uh, times maybe when you've been, been out of stock. So you might be getting, you might be getting penalized. Yeah. Within, within the PPC algorithm as well. Yeah. So I just, I will go on the, the record to say, having had considered discussions over the last five years, six years plus with a number of folks in these various groups that, that manage and, and deal with the algorithms, they've essentially confirmed the concepts that I've just outlined with regard to the, the trend analysis and what that, yeah. By the way, Google does the same thing. Let's not kid ourselves. This is not proprietary per se. The, the concept is Amazon, as uh, Lee Ron perfectly pointed out, they want to give what's best for the customer. And so they say uh, the, the customer is most likely to find what they're looking for, most likely to buy based on other people buying it, right? It's like uh, in high school, right? Uh, there's a certain click that's popular. Well, gosh, that, that's the click you, you're supposed to follow according to the robots. Um, everybody dare to be different, dare to be different. <laughs> right. So, so knowing that that can both impact pay-per-click, meaning you're paying more for the same, uh, awareness or the same click through impressions, et cetera, that you're, than your competition, that means your cost per acquisition or ROAS as they call it, uh, goes right. up. So we've talked about prevention. We've talked about why it sucks. Just give me a, a word about the honeymoon period and why is re-ranking so much more difficult than ranking to begin with. Yeah. So ranking a new, a new product, um, you know, there's this unofficial talk that Amazon has this honeymoon period, right? Which makes sense because for a number of reasons, right? Number one, uh, actually, we'll give at least three reasons why launching a new product um, is easier to rank than an older product. Okay. So number one, um, let's say, that time is a factor within the algorithm. So if you have a product that's been sitting for two months without great sales through a particular keyword or whatever, and you want to now rank it and it starts to get some sales, well, Amazon's looking at this like three month window and a week doesn't impact that three month window a lot. When you're launching a new product, that's all Amazon has to look at. So it makes sense that if you get strong sales out of the gate, that's the only time frame that exists, that it's easier to rank that there isn't this longer history that Amazon has to look at because, because it doesn't exist. So that's number one. Number two, um, Amazon, you know, Amazon, I think, wants to find a way for new products to show up, right, to, to give them a chance to show up because a new product could be more innovative. It could be better for the consumer, right? Like it could have these benefits. And three, it actually, it helps Amazon and it helps the customer because if I'm launching, um, if I'm launching a, a new product, very often the strategy is because I don't have reviews and is to underprice the competition. That's good for Amazon. It's good for the consumer. And Amazon wants that, wants that to show up too. Price is also a factor in, in the algorithm too. And you're generally pricing lower than the market. So like all these factors together would indicate why Amazon would want, you know, or would it would be easier to launch and rank a new product. And I see this consistently, you know, with PPC. We, you know, I've seen over and over again where just PPC alone, uh, an aggressive approach using you know top of search and getting clicks and conversions and sort of natural behavior and people adding your product to cart and, and all this activity within 10 days you could be ranking for some highly competitive keywords uh with with pbc alone but i see this as a much harder task to do in a seven day period on older products i think you need to give them more time and i think you might need you know more than just the uh, real sales that are coming from Amazon, you might need to give it some sort of artificial sales through giveaways and, and rebates and things like that, where you're just getting more sales in a period of time and you need to do it for a longer period of time. What I've seen with like launches nowadays is like a, a 30 day period and a more sort of natural way to launch the products where you're doing like, you know, you're going more after long tail keywords and you're ramping up the sales over, over time from, you know, five units a day to seven to 10 and not just 
used to be a few years ago, you could blast out, you know, 50 units a day over like four or five days and you'd get ranking. And I feel like the algorithm is more aware of that now and it sounds natural and you need to do it. So there's this time factor, uh, you know, and why I think also now you need sort of like longer launches to begin with because of the time factor built into the, into the algorithm. None of those elements exist with a new, with a new product. And so it is much easier, which means you have a ton of benefit to not go out of stock and to do it right the first time, um, to do your listings right, to set them up to convert the best way to have A plus content, to have great images, to like really set up everything the right way. A lot of people don't want to invest in something that they might not know is going to work, but you're also doing yourself a disservice because you're setting yourself up for failure if you're not setting yourself up to convert at the best rates possible, you know, out of the gate. Um, you know, and price is also a factor. So in the algorithm and in the ranking. So Price is also built to where, you know, if you have a product that you rank and you get a lot of sales through at $5 and you suddenly go to 15, you're going to drop rank right away because the history. So you need to also price it something that's aggressive, but not crazy aggressive that you're going to have to raise the price by a tremendous amount where you can kind of slow, slowly raise it and continue to build sales um, and reviews. But um, all this kind of yields to um, the best time to take advantage is at launch and to, and to really stay in stock. Yep. And that, that focus of the, you know, your, your attention can't go off of that product, even for a day during that, that time period, whether there's 30, 60, 90 days, they're really, you have to have that focus and you should be reforecasting daily based on movement and just go, what does this mean? What does this mean? Am I still good? Yeah. It's going to, if you think it's going to take you 30 days or 60 days to get stuck, add 30 days to it. Uh, and just people for don't know problems. This. People don't know this. You know, I have this um, sort of like bigger, brand it's a new brand they have like funding it's a food product they're about to go into into retail distribution everything um somebody introduced them to me to like help them launch this product and run the ads or whatever and meanwhile somebody else had helped them already like they have a listing it's live it's like sitting like there's nothing going on it's been like a month and i'm like great you know like we're already starting off on the wrong foot because whoever put this into practice especially bigger brands don't know the stuff right. where if you're deep into the Amazon world and in these groups and listening to this, you, you're aware of. Um, and it's why I think the small sellers have beaten the big brands a lot on Amazon in terms of like private label versus big brands. But this is where the deep knowledge that you have can go up and beat the big guys because they don't know this. Like some agency set up a listing for them, put it live. It's there. They have some stock there. And like for a month or two, they're like working on creative and working on all this stuff. And like, it's just sitting and it's like, you know, you know, sort of like, you've killed the initial momentum that you can get. It's just going to be harder. By the way, it's not really logical to think like this, right? right. Amazon has set up a whole series of things. They think uh, benefit themselves, the customer. Uh, I'm not sure the seller ever gets into that equation, but like a big companies, they go, Hey, let's really be prepared. Let's, let's lay this thing out. Let's deploy all these resources. Whereas small sellers like us, it's like a lot of times we're doing things ourselves. And so, um, so let's talk. So we've talked about the problem and, and maybe even the prevention yep. and so forth. Is there hope if, if you, yep. if you go through this, is there hope? How do you solve this problem? If okay. at all? So, so first of all, then a number of ways to solve the problem before we talk about how you might solve the problem without these ways. Right? So let's talk about how you can solve this problem. Number one. Okay. Let's say you did this launch. You ranked really well. You know, you got 20 reviews during, during this like launch period, you went out of stock, right? You could just start a new listing when you come back into stock. You've sort of seen the potential of this. You re you replicate everything else, and now you have a lot of stock, and you just start a new listing, or you start a variation on your existing listing, and you're sort of re-energizing that honeymoon period. So one option is add a new variation to the to the existing listing, or start fresh. Just start a new listing, and if you don't, you didn't get a lot. Of, you know, if you didn't gather hundreds of reviews, you're not really losing losing a lot i also feel like now it's easier to get reviews with the request review automation and the ratings versus people having to write reviews and it's, i've seen people get reviews this year at a much faster clip than i've ever seen before on amazon because of the i think automation of the request review button and the and the rating versus writing a review so you know it used to be i think if you you know if you got 30 40 50 reviews you would say i don't want to have to give that up now i don't think it's that big a deal to sort of give that up to for the benefit that you might gain from, from like doing it. So, a, doing so it getting right a now. new honeymoon period, it's a good trade. So let yeah. me ask you this, when we talk about, let's say somebody's got a bunch of inventory now, right? Cause when they brought it back in, they maybe didn't know they were going to face this challenge. So they got all this inventory. 
they as far as I know, you can't assign that to a new ASIN. You can't assign that to a, even a new variation. You have to withdraw, relabel, and resubmit. Yeah, I mean, True. ideally, ideally, you do this like if you've gone out of stock and you've you have an order on the way of two thousand units. You can even if you had a sticker printed on it or a UPC code or whatever, you re-sticker it and you launch it again under a new under a new ASIN or potentially as a variation, right? right. Where potentially if you can do it as a variation, kind of get away with it, then now you have potentially the combined reviews. Again, Amazon hasn't always been combining reviews this year on listings. It's been more scattered, but you potentially have the ability to have, you know, the reviews and the honeymoon period, which is, would be the best of both worlds. Um, but yeah, you might have to recall everything if you already sent it into Amazon. Um, and in that case, what I would try to do is I would try to probably run some kind of aggressive PPC along with giveaways do it for a 30 day period. And I think if you convert well, you should come back. But again, I've seen these anomaly cases where people never recover again. Hard to explain because sometimes you you can and sometimes you can't, right? So I think if that's the case, then re relaunch, relaunch the ASIN and start all over. And again, especially if it's your first time being out of stock and this isn't a you know product you've had for three or four years with you know a thousand reviews, it's much easier to just give up, you know, give up those those reviews or whatever and you know, kind of start fresh with it. So you talked about those that maybe being one of the, the initial easier things to do, which is kind of a combination you said of, you know, making a new listing, maybe try the variation, right? To capture any past reviews. If yep. you can't do it because that's unpredictable now, I say la vie. Right. Um, what are the other things you, you inferred that there are things like a, well, a more aggressive PPC and giveaways, but any other uh, solutions? Yeah, I mean I mean, that's the, the solution to me was that you now need to build up this new period of time, right? So it may be a period of three months, right? That you need to be aggressive, right? That you need to add in, you know, add in these, like, again, you may not need to do a hundred units in a week, but you may need to add an additional five or 10 units from rebates. You may need to be more aggressive on your PPC. You may need to have a better price and realize that the algorithm does take time into account and you might need to give this a you know 60 day push at least i would say at least a 30 day push but again if you've been out of stock for some time and amazon is looking at things on a three month basis let's say then you're gonna need to give us a longer push to see if you know if that solves solve solves the problem i would say if you do this for three months and you never regain your ranking then then it's time to call it you know it's time to to, to start again yeah, um, which maybe again, unless you're trying to preserve some extraordinary amount of stock or some extraordinary uh, review base, maybe right. just uh, flipping that switch back and, and re relaunching is, is a good way to go. Now, I want to summarize what uh, Liron just said. He said, be aggressive, uh, be aggressive. And so for those uh, cheer fans out there, that one's for you. <laughs> now, the, the, the other thing that, that I want to drive home about trends you know, we, you and I talk about it, and I think there's a lot of underlying knowledge that we kind of glance over. Yep. Uh, you, you even specifically mentioned it earlier in this uh, broadcast, which is when you start, you start at, you know, four or five, and then you move to seven or eight, and then you move to, you know, nine or 10, and then you move later to that, that 12 or 14. You don't do 200 on the first day. Right. Amazon is looking at that trend over a period of considered time much different than it used to. This is, right. again, speculation, but a lot of data to support this uh, analysis. And, and what that means is as you think about this, just saying I'm going to do five on the level every day may not be the best, most prudent choice for, for the giveaways right. and the, the rebates and so on. Well, you're, you agree with that? I see you shaking yeah. your head, but maybe the people can't. Yes, no, I, I agree that you should, you should have consistently increasing sales, right? Consistently increasing sales. So, um, and, and again, price is a factor in the algorithm. So if you drop your price and then you don't increase it right away and you do it slowly over time, dropping your price too is going to be a, a positive signal in the algorithm. So when you come back in stock, it makes sense to, to be, again, more aggressive on your price, more aggressive on your PPC spend, get more sales. The, the name of the game with Amazon ranking is conversions. That's it, right? Is conversions. And it may not even be that you need more sales, right? That if, if your competitor next to you is getting 30 sales a day, at a, you know, at a 12% conversion rate and you're getting 20 sales a day at a 20% conversion rate, you might outrank them because the name of the game is really conversions. And so if you're driving those um, sales and like you said, it's increasing. And so, yeah, I would, I would, uh, what I would do you know, when I'm planning a launch for, for a new product too, 
and um, you could use this on, on a relaunch is I'm doing phases, okay? Phase one, long tail, okay? I'm not going after the keywords that have the highest search volume that are the most competitive, that I don't have as much of a chance to stick the ranking. Um, as the people going after the long tail. There's less people targeting a, a three or four word keyword with 2,000 searches than a keyword with you know 30,000 searches and, and two words, right? So phase one is I'm going after the, I'm going after the long tail, you know, four or five keywords, and I'm ramping up, yes, doing it over, ramping up five a day for, for three or four days, seven a day, 12 a day. Let it rank, let me bring in some reviews, do the Vine program, do early reviewing program, bring in these things, and then go to phase two. Phase two, now I'm going after the mid-tail keywords. And again, I'm starting to ramp up. So it looks natural within within the, the sales algorithm. And yeah, I think I think more and more Amazon is, you know, sort of recognizing that. They're even sort of ranking services out there that um, that are even getting the sales done in a natural way. What do I mean by that? They are um, doing programs where you're, you're rebating the customer, but the customer has to have a survey after, okay? How did the uh, images look like on your listing? How do the images look like to this other competitor? What does that mean? It means you're forcing the behavior of them to click on your images. You're forcing behavior to hit the back button and look at somebody else, look at their images, then go add to cart, and you're, you're really driving that natural behavior. And I, I think more and more will probably become a more, a more important aspect. I think you can still probably just get away with people going and clicking and buying, but more and more, I think it's smart to think about what, what does natural behavior look like and how you can imitate that natural behavior to you know, influence the, the algorithm. Yep, I think that's uh, very good. Uh, any, any key takeaways? How would you summarize the, the, the situation? If somebody called you and they said, hey, I, uh, you know, I, I was uh, really on top of the world and then I uh, got kicked in the uh, guts, uh, yep. what would you give them as a core takeaway? I would, I would have them... I would have them implement everything they could do to increase conversion rates and and also realize that it's that there's time time is a factor that you may not recover in in day one but like take a look at first of all take a look at your listing is it super set up to be for conversions right like from a from a copy from especially from an images from a plus from a video perspective are you maximizing amazon ads are you running video ads are you running sponsor brand ads you have a storefront like all these elements like are you first from a sort of foundational conversion standpoint, and then from a, how can you, how can you drive more conversions like price and, you know, doing things like, like giveaways and like, what are, you know, can you basically throw the book at it, especially if it's a product that has proven to you before that has sales, like invest in making it better and, uh, and looking at sort of time factor for, um, you know, from influencing sales and, and potentially one thing we didn't talk about here is include maybe some outside traffic, right? Amazon likes external traffic may not convert well necessarily, but Amazon likes external traffic and, you know, maybe run some Google ads, Google search ads, you know, to, to this product, maybe run some Pinterest ads to this product and show the algorithm that there's like a lot of good signals happening with it. Yep. Signals. I like that. Uh, Leron, thanks, buddy, for uh, jumping on here with me. Um, I really appreciate it. your wisdom is always welcome. Where where can people reach you? Tell them a little bit about uh, some of your businesses or what, whatever you're most focused sure. on right now. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you. Um, so I'm very active on on Facebook. You, you can find me. I also have a group called the E-commerce Mindset and the podcast called E-commerce Mindset. Um, and um, uh, my uh, my agency site is IncrementumDigital.com. Uh, we manage uh, ads we're on pace to, to manage over 20 million dollars in, in ad spend a year uh, with ppc and and some dsp um, we're starting to take on uh brand management fully fully managing brands um i have some some partnerships in, in some of those uh brands we're managing um and then one other thing is i've been helping sellers with um inventory financing um so i had this um to, to kind of give you some some backstory um probably in july or august this year i had a, a startup actually based in israel reach out to me and uh say hey you're an influencer help us get some clients to to uh you know to for our lending product um and so i get a lot of these pitches and usually don't necessarily for affiliate stuff or whatever but um actually have like an innovative um e-commerce lending solution where they figure out you know, how much money you need for like the next six or 12 months. And they actually lend it to you as you need it. So, you, you know, with e-commerce, you have a hundred thousand dollar order. You don't need the full hundred thousand at once. You need 20,000 for a deposit and some more money later on. And so they're issuing you that money as you need it. Their end result is you don't, 
you don't end up paying interest on, on the full amount and they're kind of doing it in an in innovative way. So I did a small trial with them, brought them like five or six people. They actually made offers, pretty decent offers to all of them. Um, and so I've taken uh, a tiny slice of a very small amount of equity to help them, uh, you know, get clients, but they, they've been helping. They, they helped um, one of my PPC clients actually um, lent them like $900,000 um, to grow their business for the next year. And like as low as like 25,000. So you can reach out to me, um, Lirana Incrementum Digital, if um, you know, that, that might be um, helpful for you. And then yeah, on the Amazon ad side um, as well. Excellent. Well, listen, as always, uh, your generosity to the community is appreciated. Uh, I'm a fan. Uh, I dig it. If, I'm, if, I'm a fan of yours too. <laughs> if we were not, uh, uh, I don't know, locked up in the cages. I have a cage out in front of my house. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Uh, then we would uh, see each other. But uh, you yes. know, soon enough, I, I, I can tell the world is going to come yes. back. So, and Steve, um, I know maybe you just you weren't planning on talking about this post, but you know, like I know a year ago you told me like you you were having a health issue, and I recently saw your Facebook post, and like things are getting better, and I was super uh, super. Uh, happy to to see that and you know and that uh, that you're doing uh, better. Um, you're you, you know one of the people that I came to you for advice. You know this is like a few 2018 I think on, on an issue and you, you had a mastermind and you weren't accepting new people. And, you know you spent like in Hawaii you know like 30 minutes an hour with me just like giving me advice and yeah I could say the same you know about you always uh, you know uh, I feel like helping people in the in the Amazon community. So uh, all all good things uh, happening. I was I was happy to see your you know, sort of post uh, a few weeks ago. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm a lucky guy. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, listen, we should all try to take a minute, get our house in order and then pay it forward. That's, it Absolutely. just makes life worth living. It's more fulfilling and uh, it leads to good times. So yeah. thanks again, everybody. Uh, Osmers.com, uh, episode number 203, Osmers.com slash 203. This one's in the can, everybody. We'll see you next time. And thanks, uh, Liran. I do appreciate it. Thank you. See ya.